Good morning, everybody. <laughs> Good to see everybody here. We're glad you're here this morning. All right. Well, let's uh, let's start with a prayer. We're going to get right into the worship this morning. Thank you for being here this morning. Lord, we come before your throne this morning. I just pray that as we, uh, uh, we get ready to lift our voices to you, our hands, uh, give you a clap of praise, a shout of joy, Lord, that, uh, Lord, may we be able to take everything that we've um, had, maybe going through our hearts and minds, our lives this past week, uh, just to set it aside for just a few minutes this morning as we focus on you you and who you are in our lives, Lord. Uh, thank you for bringing us all together this morning to worship. We thank you for those that are uh, being able to watch online. And uh, we just pray, Lord, that, that your Holy Spirit would be present with us this morning as we come together. Uh, we thank you and pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.
just wait for the Lord to return. Amen, right?
you may be seated. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this uh, beautiful day, a day that we can come to worship you. Uh, more importantly, Father, we thank you for this special season, this time uh, that we have between Thanksgiving and Christmas, a time that we can reflect, Father. We reflect upon the blessings that you've given us, the great gifts of uh, benevolence, Father, that you've given us through our lives. But more importantly, Father, we thank you for this time coming up when we can reflect upon the ultimate gift that you've given us, Father. It's also a time, Father, that uh, for many people, it's a time where they find it difficult. Uh, we find many people feeling themselves alone, that they face a lot of hurdles, a lot of depression, a lot of other circumstances, that this time of year is exceptionally difficult. Uh, ultimately, Father, though, we know that this is a great time of hope. We ask that you be with us as we walk uh, these next weeks in our lives, Father, that we can be a beacon to them, Father, that we can show your love your light to them that they can find the ultimate light of the world the gift that you sent on christmas so many years ago the gift of your son that you walked among us father that you chose to be in human flesh that you chose to understand us to reach out to us father to seek a relationship with each and every one of us help us to remember that father so that we can give that gift to others uh, this time of year we give gifts but that's the ultimate gift of all that we can bring others to you that they can know your love and your light we pray all these things in the name of your precious Son, Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Ralph. Thank you, praise team. Welcome to West Side. We're glad you're here this morning. I, I know that um, it's uh, that special time of year where we get excited for a lot of different things. Doesn't the church look beautiful this morning? Yeah. Out in the foyer. Uh, Thank, thank you to everybody that was here Wednesday night and, and days before that helping prepare all this. And it looks great and uh, just uh, can't wait to spend these next few weeks with you uh, just as we celebrate the birth of our Savior and as we remember what Christ did for us. So, uh, we'll have some announcements at the end of the service, but the most important thing right now I want to just share with you um, all that's in the bulletin. But on the bulletin, there's a tear out section there. Uh, that's your way to communicate with us. If you're visiting with us, just drop your name on that and drop it in the offering plate at the end of the service. And that just gives us a record of your attendance with us this morning. Uh, if you have a, you've moved, you've changed your email, your phone number, you, you're welcome to use that just as a way to communicate to the office. Uh, that information there. So uh, most importantly, on the opposite side of that is the prayer request side. If there's anything that we can pray for you about as a church, uh, please take the time and, and write that down on that prayer request section. Drop that on the offering plate as well. I uh, love to get those and, and pray over those during the week. Um, if you're watching online and, and you want to just email us a prayer concern or any kind of change of uh, address or contact information, just do that as well. Drop, drop it to the office at westsidebc.org and we'll be able to get that information in there. All right, well, we just want to take a few minutes and we're going to greet one another in the Lord. Our children at the end of the greeting time will be excused to go to the children's church with Miss Elena and Miss Joanne, I believe, this morning. And uh, yeah, so uh, we will have that time. But let's stand up and, and greet somebody maybe you haven't talked to yet this morning. Give them a handshake, a hug on the neck. And go.
good morning. Welcome back. Find your seat, and if you can't find your seat, just sit in someone else's seat, and then they'll tell you it's not your seat. No, okay, no, just kidding. All right. I cannot believe we're in the month of December, and, and 2023 is going to be here in just a few weeks. It's, that's crazy. But... Uh, all right. Uh, praying uh, earlier uh, several past weeks and just like okay Lord what do you want me to do this year for, for Christmas obviously we're going to talk about the Christmas story but I don't know I think I shared this with you last year sometimes this is a struggle for pastors when we come to like the Easter and the Christmas stories because uh, the amount of material and like okay I've, I've done that last year I did the you know and it's like ugh, and it's, it's a struggle so <laughs> I, I was praying through that uh, over the month of November, kind of looking at some different things that I could do. Last year, went through the Gospel of Luke, just kind of verse by verse, the Christmas story this year. But this year, I, f I felt led to kind of take a page out of the Advent calendar. Uh, you know, we, we call it Christmas. Sometimes it's called Advent, right? It's Advent is the, the weeks, the four weeks leading up to Christmas. Um, you can call it either one. But uh, there, there's some calendars that you can look at and, and kind of use different themes and I, and I felt led to do that uh, with you this year uh, specifically looking at, at four themes as, as we draw closer to Christmas uh, those those themes are waiting which we're going to look at today uh, mystery redemption and incarnation so those are the four uh, sermons that you'll hear from me uh, I want to encourage you be here next week even though I'm not going to be here because you're going to hear a great message from our associational missionary uh, Steve Parr he will be here in my place he's coming to preach so uh, be here and support him and uh, just have a you'll enjoy his message I'm not sure what he's preaching I didn't tell him he could preach about anything he wanted to but uh, you'll enjoy hearing from him next week so uh, be here for that but uh, so these, these four themes, waiting, mystery, redemption, and incarnation. So we're going to look at what these have to do with the Christmas story. Uh, today we're looking at waiting on the Lord. Um, if you notice that some of the songs we sang today, you know, we, we wait on the Lord. Uh, you know, children, right, they are sometimes notoriously impatient for special days during the year, right? Whether it's Christmas or their birthday birthday, special days that they look forward to, and um, I, I don't know about you, but um, maybe adults maybe not so patient either, right? <laughs> sometimes, uh, but we, we children especially anticipate uh, the Christmas season, right? Because they know that sometimes the gifts come. And, uh, I'll just, I was thinking back this week, one of my favorite Christmas decorations in our home growing up were these green felt things that we hung on the door they were made out of felt and yarn and they had a little jingle belt at the bottom and there were what you did is you tied I think there were 10 or 12 candy canes that you you tied on these strings on the thing and it, it was it was like the 10 days before Christmas or the 12 days before Christmas and every day we could go and pull one of these candy canes off this like green thing I think one of our neighbors made, might have made it for us and uh, but that was the one thing because I could like count down and and like okay Christmas is seven days away or five days away or three days away you know and it was as children we, we get excited about these things right like you know and this I've seen other things similar to that in the stores they have these uh, houses that you can open up a door or window and it kind of counts down the days until Christmas right and uh, but that was one of, one of my favorite decorations I don't know mom do we still have that <laughs> thought, okay good so I, I should have called and made a nice little illustration but it's all right <clears throat> but um, we we wait a lot of times for these special days, but Christmas is all about waiting too. Um, but I'm not talking about the packages, waiting for the packages to arrive. I'm not talking about waiting on the highways because you're stuck in traffic. I'm not talking about uh, waiting in the lines at the stores. We all wait there. I'm not talking about waiting for family to arrive or, or waiting to share gifts. Uh, Christmas is about waiting on the Lord. Uh, we're going to see this this morning. Uh, is, is waiting on the Lord for His plan to take place. Um, it, it 
first we're going to look at it uh, is about in, from a historical perspective, but we're also waiting for Jesus and his plan of salvation. And that's what we're going to look at this morning. With, with If you will go ahead and turn to Matthew chapter 1, uh, verse 18 is where we're going to start. Um, we're going to see how, how these characters of these people in the Christmas story how they had to deal with waiting and, and even before that uh, even in the Old Testament too so uh, I'm gonna read quite a bit this morning so hang out with me uh, I'm gonna read a chapter and a half to you but they're small chapters so starting in Matthew chapter 1 verse 18 this is how the birth of Jesus Christ came about his mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph but before they came together, she was found to be with child through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was a righteous man and did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after they considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son. You are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will be with child and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord commanded him, and he took Mary home as his wife. But he had no union with her until she gave birth to a son, and he, uh, and he gave him the name Jesus. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star in the east and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed and all Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all the people, all the ch uh, chief priests and the teachers of the law, he asked them, Where is the Christ was to be born? In Bethlehem in Judea, they replied, for this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, by no means are least among the rulers of Judah, for out of you will come a ruler who will be the shepherd uh, of my people Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go, make a careful search for the child, and as soon as you find him, report to me so that I too may go and worship him. After they, had heard the, uh, after they heard the king, they went on their way, uh, and the star they had seen in the east went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother, Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. They opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold, incense, and myrrh. They had been, having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another route. When they had gone, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream. Get up, he said. Take the child and his mother and escape to Egypt. Stay there until I tell you, for Herod is going to search for the child to kill him. So they got up and took the child and his mother during the night and then left for Egypt. When they stayed there until the death of Herod, and so was fulfilled what the Lord had said through the prophet, Out of Egypt I called my son. When Herod realized that he had been outwitted by the Magi, he was furious, and he gave orders to kill all the boys in Bethlehem and its vicinity who were two years old and under, in accordance with the time he had learned from the Magi. Then what was said through the prophet Jeremiah was fulfilled. A voice is heard in Ramah, weeping in great mourning, Rachel weeping for her children and refusing to be comforted because they are no more. After Herod died, uh, an angel of the Lord appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt and said, Get up, take the child and his mother and go to the land of Israel, for those who are trying to take the child's life are dead. 
So he got up and took the child and his mother, and they went into the land of Israel. But when he had uh, heard Archelaus was reigning in Judea, uh, Judea excuse me, in place of his father Herod, he was afraid to go there. Having been warned in a dream, he withdrew to the district of Galilee, and he went and lived in a town called Nazareth. So was fulfilled what was said through the prophets, he will be called a Nazarene. All right, thank you. I know that was a lot, but I just I want to give you the, the full context there. I uh, want to point out three things to you this morning. Uh, we see some waiting going on here in the scriptures, and I think we'll see how it'll apply to us as well in the 21st century. Um, waiting on the Lord, number one on your outline there. Waiting on the Lord means trusting God's wisdom while we wait. Waiting on the Lord means trusting God's wisdom while we wait. Um, five times in, in these scriptures that I read to you this morning, five times there, there's this phrase that it, it, it says, this was fulfilled through the prophets, what the prophets have said. It's different, different times, different ways it said it, and you know, Scripture is not exactly the same each time, but, but five times in this chapter and a half, it, Matthew specifically points back to the Old Testament prophets, that this was things that were spoken of, that were set by God hundreds of years before it actually took place, right? Um, God spoke to the different prophets, whether it was Micah, Jeremiah, Isaiah, all the different prophets. Uh, you know, I encourage you, some of them were named here, some of them, you, if, you, if you look in your Bible, you'll see a little letter or a footnote there. It'll, it'll take you to the Old Testament scripture, whether it's Isaiah chapter 9 or Micah chapter 5, and you can see what these Old Testament prophets prophesied about the coming Messiah here. Uh, some good homework. It's good to know these things and to look at all these different pieces and how they come together hundreds of years in the future. Um, you ever wonder what prophecy is for? Like, why, why did God send prophets? Well, it was to straighten people out sometimes, right? He, prophets spoke truth, right? They, they said, this, this is going to happen, and this is what you're doing is wrong, and you need to stop it, you know? And so that was one role. But I think a secondary role of prophecy was to, to also point to the credibility of the Lord and to say, God foreordained this. He saw this because of his infinite wisdom that this is what he desires to take place and it's going to take place and it's it's kind of like an apologetic that we look at and we we know that we can trust the Lord all right um, I'm not gonna break into an apologetic with you this morning but uh, you know apologetics on prophecy in the Old Testament is something that we should pay attention to uh, that's one of the reasons why we can trust God's Word because we have God's Word thousands of years in, in the scriptures and what God spoke and we can see them come to pass in the future. That's one of the, what, just one of the reasons why we can trust God's word, why it should have authority over you and me in our lives. But that is one of the reasons there, you know, God, God gave it to us so that we would understand his wisdom and his, his knowledge and the, that we might trust him, I believe. If, we, if a prophet speaks, then, then we say, okay, he said this, it took place, that means I can trust it. You know, I think that's one of the reasons why God gives us that. Here's the thing, we're, we're talking about waiting on the Lord, right, this morning. Think, think about who God is. He's an eternal being, right? God is timeless, <laughs> right? He, time means very little to God, only, only in the relation that it, it affects you and I. God is an infinite, eternal being, and time is, means very little to God. He's timeless. Uh, you know, I love the scripture, Psalm 90, verse 4 says that for a thousand years in your sight is like a day has just gone by or like a watch in the night. That's Psalm 90, verse 4, right? Uh, God is timeless. 
But yet, at the same time, church, God is timely. God is an infinite, you know, eternal being, always existed. Time means religion. But at the same time, church, God is timely. He plans everything out. And it's all under his sovereign will. And that's something that I hope will bring us comfort and, and help us know that God, that we can trust him. I love what Galatians 4.4 4 says. Uh, it says this, it says that, But when the time had fully come, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under law, to redeem those under the law that we might receive the full rights as sons and daughters, right? Uh, it just, but it just when the time had fully come, uh, God has a plan and He's working it. Okay, um, and and sometimes we don't like to wait. I, I don't know about you, but we don't like waiting in stores and traffic and all these other things I named a while ago. But think about who God is, and He is timeless. But He's working all this out. And, and we need to take a breath, sit back a little bit, and, and trust God's timing in, in our lives, in the lives of our family, our loved ones, our friends. Uh, this, this is something that we really need to consider. Um, much has been thought about why why did Jesus come at the time that he came why not why would Jesus not come sooner you know you, there's this period we call it the the 400 years of silence right between uh, the last prophet Malachi and the New Testament time there there seems to be this kind of uh, silence here well uh, a lot of people have put some thoughts to it and I just you know I think there's something to it you know Jesus came in just the right time, as Galatians says, right? And when the time had fully come, there's an exact time that Jesus was to come to die for our sins, to give his life, to be born. Um, and, and God has it all planned out. Think about when Jesus came. He came during the time of the Roman dominance and empire, right? Well, what, what's that about? Well, think about it. There were several things that the Romans did that enabled really they were one of the first great empires that really branched out all over many different continents Africa and all up Europe and into the east their their reach was broad and, and Rome enabled that because of they had a common language of Greek they they had a common uh, road system that was developed under Rome that they allowed travel uh, you you know Paul and some of these New Testament people could safely travel all over pretty much you know maybe not like us today but they, they could travel all over the Roman Empire with safety and get word around and there was a common mail system and letters and all these travel routes and all this took place during the Roman Empire, during the Roman might. And, and I think I think some people that speculate on this have something to it. You know, there's Jesus came at just the right time to to come to die for our sins, but also so that the message of the gospel could be spread to everybody around with pretty much a maybe not as easy in our day we can send a text message all the way around the world but there's this something to this that started you know and so if people say why wait why did God wait why couldn't he just handle and bring salvation you know right in Abraham and Moses day there, there's a time to it you know I think part of it too is showing that humans had to try it themselves right God had his people Israel and they were supposed to be a witness to the nations around them and and I think the Old Testament shows that we we as humans we don't always get it right we we mess it up and so that's why God had to come so there had to be that trust kind of like if you remember when you had children growing up they wanted to do something like, oh let me do it and you're like I know if you do this you're gonna mess it up but okay you want to let them experience that and then you help them maybe do what they were trying to do uh, I think that's what it was a little bit with us as people God says okay you think you can do it humans you think you can solve your own problem of sin go ahead and try but then Jesus comes 
God gives his son at just the right time and provides for us. Uh, all right, so what about us today, right? We're not waiting for Jesus to come to be born anymore. Of course not. But we are waiting for his return, right? We, we do have to wait for his second coming. Uh, we, we do have to wait on many things. We, many of us are yearning for God's justice to come, to set things right, to take care of evil, right? To, you know, and, and to handle things. To, we wait too, just as these believers in the Old Testament did, who heard these prophets speak about these coming Messiah. Uh, they had to wait. So, so do we. We we have to wait too, right? Um, I, I was thinking this week and the, the timing of it all. Maybe you've you've experienced this. Maybe you were at a, a job and you were not really happy there, and you were like, "I want to leave. I want to go somewhere else." And you felt like, "Oh, man, there's no doors opening. There's no opportunities, right?" And I, I remember over my past that you know when I was itching to move, you know, God said, just wait. And, and God opened doors for me, and he's probably opened doors for you. You know, you get turned down in an interview, only to get looked at in another place. And you realize, you know what? I saw God's hand walking me right through that, and, and how he just kind of took care of that. I think we can all recognize uh, stuff like that. You know, we're, we're at the end of the college football season, right? Everybody was watching games yesterday, and uh, there's all this and it's going to be interesting tonight what's going to take place is Alabama going to get into the college uh, playoffs right because they were ranked six and, and the two teams above them <laughs> we've got some opinions going here you know, uh, you know it's all about timing right you may not have been one of the four best teams but that other team lost and they kind of put you into the, the position right so you know it's, it's all about timing um but, but for us, spiritually speaking, do we, church, do we trust God with his timing? I know some things that we go through we don't like. And, it, it, you know, we just we want to get out of those circumstances and difficult places in life. But I, I just want to encourage you this morning. Do we trust God's perfect timing? Again, remember, God is timeless. Time means very little to God, but he is also timely. And sometimes, we'll see here in just a minute, we have to go through some things to, to get to these places, right? Do we trust God that his, his will for our life, my life and your life, is a, he's a timely God? And, and sometimes that involves waiting, just like we see here in the Christmas story. All right, secondly on your outline... Trusting on or waiting on the Lord does not mean that we are inactive while we wait. Trusting on the Lord does not mean that we are inactive while we wait. And you've probably heard this before. You've seen, you've heard somebody talk about this. That, you know, well, just because I'm waiting doesn't mean I have to sit on my thumbs or, or sit on my hands. That sounds wrong. <laughs> but um, we, we can be active and, and while we wait, we don't have to do anything. Um, the, I'm sorry, I'm having a moment here. <laughs> Just go ahead and laugh it out, Pastor Don. Okay, you don't sit on your thumbs, you sit on your hands. Okay, danger prone John does it again. I'm sorry. All right, well, <laughs> just breathe. Just wait, John. Okay, um, here in the story here, we, we see that there's some waiting going on here, but there's some activity here. You see this with the, the magi from, that come from the east here in the story. These uh, magi, these wise men, some people call them, they've traveled probably, according to the scripture, some people will say maybe two years to come see. That's why if you look at our manger scene down here, we've got the, the nativity scene over here, we've got the wise men. They're not, they're not there yet. They're, they're on their way. They're, they're getting there, right? So, um, but these wise men had to travel, probably maybe because you go back in Scripture, it says that Herod wanted to kill all the children two years and under. Uh, this, you know, the wise men probably got there not on Christmas night. We, we know this, right? Um, but they spent a lot of time traveling, following, seeking. We talked about seeking a lot in our Bible study class this morning. Seeking the Lord. Uh, verse 2 there in, in chapter 2 says, We saw his star in the east 
And we have come to worship him. They, they were seeking after this newborn king to worship. Uh, it was a journey for them. It wasn't just a, let's hop in the car, kids, and go to the Walmart down the street. This was a long journey that they put themselves into. And, and, and for you and I, right? Uh, you see some other things in here too. Um, Joseph and Mary, uh, they, they didn't stop their plans either, right? They, they were planning to be engaged and to get married. And then the Holy Spirit throws a surprise on Mary. Hey, Mary, by the way, you're going to be pregnant with child through the Holy Spirit. Uh, they continued their you know, uh, Joseph, the, the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream and says, Don't be afraid to take Mary as your wife. They, they continued to live as, as a couple, right? So, uh, you know, we've probably all heard this statement before, too. When God is silent or He doesn't answer us, the best thing for you and I to do is to keep doing the last thing that He told us to do, right? Maybe you've heard that kind of statement in some fashion or some way or another. If, if God is silent or He doesn't answer our prayers or respond to us, then maybe we should keep doing the last thing that He told us to do, right? Some of us pray for direction and say, God, help me. What, what do you want me to do? What decision do you want me to make? Uh, and if we feel like God is silent with us, He's not responding, then, then that's, I think, is good advice. You know, keep doing the last thing that we know that God told us to do, to keep continuing to be obedient. You know, if, if, if it's a job, if you, if you are working a place and you're not happy there, uh, you know, God says, I want you to go here. Well, until he moves you somewhere else, keep serving the Lord in that job that he's given you. Keep developing relationships with the people around you. Uh, you know, keep doing the same thing that he told you to do before that. And I think that's good advice, if you will. Um, you know, for us today, we, we wait on the Lord, right? We're waiting for God to return. We're waiting for Jesus to come back. But it doesn't mean we do nothing. We know that God has given us several things that, that we should be about as believers. You know, we, we go look at the, the Great Commission. Everybody always starts there, right? Go ye therefore and make disciples. And here's the thing. Remember, making disciples is not making converts. You know, we've talked about this. God doesn't want just people to make a decision. God, the Lord said, go make disciples. A disciple is somebody who's a follower of someone else. And so the Great Commission we often talk about is, is really twofold. It's, it's evangelism. It's finding people that want to follow Christ. But it's also teaching them to obey everything that I've commanded you. It's, it's, it's evangelism and discipleship together. And, and that's what we, one of the main things as a church that we should be about. You know, God, right before he was taken up to heaven, says, Go share the message. Go share the gospel. Uh, share, evangelize, and make disciples. There are other things that we can do. We, we can stand up, church. We can fight for the biblical things that we know are right, whether that's uh, social justice issues of, of racism and, and different things uh, that, you know, that we know, you know that the world is struggling with. We say, hey, that, that's not right. And, and this is what the Bible teaches. And this is why, you know, and it doesn't mean, well, just because I'm going to heaven, I've accepted Christ, and I'm going to follow him, so I'm going to heaven, so I don't have to do anything else. I can sit on my hands. Um, but no, we, 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 we're busy. We're active doing what the Lord wants us to do. And, and whether that's, Helping people come to Christ, whether that's discipling people, whether that's getting involved in ministry, helping other people, um, helping the poor, helping the widows, loving our neighbors, as, as Jesus put it, right? Loving our neighbors. Um, that's what we should be about. So just because we wait for the Lord to come back and we yearn for that, it, it, we can still be active, church. And you see this in the scripture here with these wise men who sought after Christ. They, they were waiting for this to come, but they just weren't sitting there. They, they were continuing to search, to seek after the Lord. Is there anything in our life this morning 
that we're not doing that we should be doing? Have we kind of pushed it to the side and said, you know what, I'm going to let the, this generation take care of that. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let that person take care of that. I'm not really good at that. I'm, I know I'm going to heaven. That's all I'm really focused about. Is there something in our life that, that we need to be actively doing that, that God has called us to do? Uh, is someone is could be counting on us. Uh, it could be a coworker at work. It could be a student at your school that that needs to have a relationship with Christ, and and you need to, need to go invite them to come with you and, and come to church and hear the gospel. Maybe you don't understand how to share the gospel, but but you can invite somebody to come to church where they will hear the gospel. Uh, is there anything in our life that we're not doing? Are we being inactive? To, just we think about that this morning. Thirdly, on your outline there, waiting on the Lord may involve some detours while we wait. Waiting on the Lord may involve some detours while we wait. As I was kind of picking through this, I thought back to the Easter message we had this past spring. Uh, we did the series, The Road to Hope, if you remember. And we talked, we kind of equated things to traveling on the road. One of those messages was about sometimes on the road of life, we take detours, don't we, right? We, we always want to go the quickest route, you know, if you set up your GPS, your Google, or whatever, your Waze, whatever you like to use when you're going places. We always want the fastest route. We don't say, hey, Siri, give me the longest route that avoids toils and, and you know whatever and has the most Christmas light. No, that, we don't do that. We we want the fastest route. We want to get there quickly because we won't want to waste any time. Um, but sometimes God puts detours in our lives, and that causes us a little stress, and we freak out a little bit. But I, I want you to see this this morning that those detours are God ordained detours. That, that God wants us to take and to, to go through. Um, look, at, look at the Christmas story again here with Mary and Joseph, right? Uh, all the things that they faced. They, uh, when Mary found herself pregnant, they, well, that kind of messed up their plans a little bit for marriage, obviously right there. But then towards the end of her pregnancy, here comes uh, this census that had to be taken according to the Gospel of Luke, right? And so, wow, she's got to get, get on a donkey or a horse and travel while she's pregnant. That's not fun. <laughs> you know, got to go and, and be a part of the census. That's a little bit of a detail. Tour. And then we see here in the Christmas story in chapter 2 here, uh, this, this escape to Egypt. That's a big detour, right? The, these guys, uh, they knew that the, through the Holy Spirit, through the angel of the Lord, giving Joseph a dream, saying, hey, you need to go to Egypt. And it's interesting, it says he's, he wakes up in the middle of the night and goes right then. He doesn't waste any time. If this is what you want, Lord, okay, this is what we're doing. Uh, and so that's a big detour. Look at, uh, verse 14 and 15 there in, your, in chapter 2 says, so he got up, took the child and his mother during the night and left for Egypt where he stayed until the death of Herod. Um, there are all sorts of detours in, in the Christmas story here. But here's the thing. The detours, church, were all part of God's plan. If you go back to the, again to the what the prophets spoke of and what they foretold, uh, verse 15 says, right there, it says that out of Egypt I called my son. He's quoting one of the prophets. God knew that it was going to take some detours. Don't, don't we realize the same thing? <laughs> I, mean, I know we get bent up out of shape. Man, I am waiting for this to happen, and I can't wait for this to take place. And then when it finally does, you know, I know everything will be okay. Well, that's what we think. <laughs> um, but God says, you know what? I know that's what you think, but in, in order for me to make you who I want you to be, to be more Christ-like, you're going to have to take a detour or two <laughs> or three in life so that you can learn or that you will pick up so that I can refine you in a fire, so to speak, and, and be who I want you to be. 
uh, the, those detours, you know, those things that make us stronger or more Christ-like. That's important. I mean, we, I was thinking about this, we even see this in, in nature, right? When a baby bird or something is born in an egg, uh, they, I've heard people say, don't take the egg and try to help the bird out. Why? Because it's that struggle of that bird trying to break out of the shell is what helps the bird loosen up its wings and learn you know, that it has muscles and it can strengthen and be ready to fly one day, right? And so if we, if we took the shortcut and we helped the bird out and break the egg out, that bird is not going to be as strong as it needs to be and might not be able to fly. And it's the same thing for you and I. If, if we don't go through the struggles that we go through, that we don't like, that we hate, right? Uh, God will not be able to make us into the people that He wants us to, to be. And as we learn, and you know, and if I don't learn a lesson, how can I teach that lesson to my children or to my coworkers or to my friends? Right? And so it's not just for ourselves, but sometimes when we go through difficult circumstances and situations, it's not only to help us to grow, but it's also so that we can turn around and help someone else out. The, the things that we have experienced that, that we can say, hey, I don't want you to, to make this same mistake because it's, you know, it's, it's, and we can help somebody else through that. Um, where, where are you at this morning? Our, you know, Christmas is all about um, gifts and giving, right? We, we think about presents. Do you know that God wants to give you a gift? You know, in, in the bulletin, you'll see something in there. Uh, maybe you're, I've already had a couple questions this morning. Uh, we want to take your emails. We want to get your emails because the church, Westside, wants to give you a gift this Christmas. And it's really a, it's really a cool, practical gift that we want to give you that I know will benefit you and your faith. Uh, but in order to do that, you have to give us your email. We have m some of your emails already, but if, if you have a new e email address, I want to encourage you to write it down, put it in the tear-off thing, and put it in the offering plate over the next two Sundays. Give us your emails. We want to give you a gift, but do you know that, that God wants to give you a gift too? And He did give you a gift. Uh, he gave us Jesus Christ. Uh, I love what Romans 6.23 says. That for, it says, For the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Uh, Christmas, we always think about gifts. Oh, gifts at Christmas. God gave the first gift, church. He gave His Son so that He would die and give us eternal life if we choose to trust in Him and to follow Him. And, and so my question for you this morning is, is where and do you have you taken the gift of God already? Have you chosen to follow Christ to be His disciple? Uh, I want to encourage you to do that. To take that gift. It, it's a gift that we can enjoy now in life and have abundant life in Christ. But it's also a gift of eternal life, as the Scripture says. God wants to give you a gift. He wants to give you a home, a place to be in heaven. And I don't know where you're at this morning. If you've never chosen to follow Christ in your own life, maybe you know who Christ is. Uh, maybe you can identify with me. When I, when I was, I grew up in church all my life, right? I knew about Jesus. I knew who people were in the Bible. I had all this knowledge in my head. But there was one thing that I lacked. I lacked trusting in the Lord with my life, in my heart, we might say. When I was 13 years old, I was just moved by the Holy Spirit. You know, John, you know all these facts about the Bible and about God and who he is in the Scripture, but you've never trusted in yourself. So when I was 13 years old, I came down and, and, and spoke to a pastor and a counselor, and I gave my life to Christ when I was 13 and said, I, I want to take my head knowledge of knowing this information and these facts about Jesus, and I want to trust Him with my life. And are you here this morning? Maybe you have a bunch of knowledge about, no, I, I know who Jesus is. I know He died on the cross. I know about the disciples and Moses and all these people. But do you really truly trust the Lord with your life? Will you give Him your life? Will you follow Him? If that's you this morning, I want to help you with that. Uh, you can 
The Bible says, whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. That's in Romans chapter 10. And I want to just give you that opportunity this morning, right where you're sitting. If, if you'd like to give your life to Christ, if you want to follow Him and say, the best way I know how, I want to live for uh, if that's you this morning, I always ask everybody in here, just close your eyes, nobody getting up. Uh, if you'd like to ask Christ to come into your life, uh, say a prayer to the Lord, something like this. Say, Dear God, I know I'm a sinner. I believe that you came to die on the cross for my sins. Today, Lord, I'm coming to you. I want to turn from my sin and place my faith in you. Help me to live for you the very best way that I can. Thank you for giving me the gift of eternal life. In Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, in a minute, we're going to have a, a time of invitation. We're going to have an opportunity if you want to come down to the, the altar, the steps down here and, and pray. You're welcome to pray about anything. Um, I, I just want to encourage you, if, if you prayed that prayer this morning and you asked Christ to come in your life, would you have the courage to step out and just come, come down here and just tell me, hey, Pastor John, I prayed that prayer. Now what? what we we want to help you as a church. We want to say, hey, that's great and we're going to celebrate with you and here's kind of your next steps and we'll just walk you through what it means to be a follower of Christ and what does that involve. We'll help you with that. You don't have to come down here and make any speeches or anything like that, but we want to help you and your new life life as you follow Christ. For, for others of you, maybe you've already made that decision. You've chosen to follow Christ. Uh, but maybe there's a, a trust issue going on here this morning. Maybe we're going through something in our life and we have to realize, you know what? I need to wait on the Lord. I need to trust His timing. Or maybe it, maybe you're waiting on the Lord, but you're sitting on your hands and you're like, you know what? I'm not doing anything. I need to be active. I need to be sharing my faith and helping people and, and being discipled and, and serving in ministry. Maybe there's something that, that God is calling you to do in, in service to Him this morning. Uh, I just, just, whatever the Lord puts on your heart, let's, let's pray and we'll have our time of invitation. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we just come to you to now, Lord. And I just pray, Lord, that your Holy Spirit would just have freedom to, to move in our sanctuary this morning. Help us to step out of the pew and, and to walk down if we need to, to make a, a confession of faith this morning or if we need to come down here and pray at the altar. Help us to, to be bold and courageous enough to do what you put on our heart, Lord. If there's someone here today that, uh, that needs to be more active in their faith, Lord, I pray that, that we will not uh, lay our heads on our pillows tonight and rest until we know what you want us to do and that we'll say, I'm going to try to obey you, Lord, the best way I can. Uh, thank you for this time. We pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. If you'll stand. Lay it down. Lay it down.
Holy Father, Lord, I, I pray that even as we close this time of invitation down, I pray, Lord, that uh, you'll continue to speak to our hearts and our minds this afternoon. Uh, Lord, thank you for your gift of Jesus. Thank you that, uh, that you gave your Son so that we could have eternal life. Uh, Lord, I, I pray now as we come this time, we give our, our tithes and offerings to you. I just pray that you'll take the gifts that are given, use them for your kingdom. Uh, Lord, thank you for the blessings of, of being a part of a church that is faithful in the tithe and offering. And Lord, we're excited about what you're going to do uh, over the next year as, as we uh, begin a 2023 here shortly, Lord. We pray all these things in the powerful name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. All right. While uh, the offering is being passed there, just want to bring your attention to a couple of things in the bulletin there. You see that the tonight at 6 o'clock is our 2023 budget presentation. Uh, the finance team will bring before the church tonight. We will meet in room 108 down the hallway there for that. Uh, you, this is your opportunity to ask questions about the 2023 budget uh, the, the finance team has created. Uh, you can make suggestions to the finance team if you feel led to do that but uh, they'll take that and then it'll be kind of wrapped up and then on December 18th we'll just do a up or down vote on the Sunday morning service for that uh, you see the Christmas calendar there in green in the bulletin there that just kind of gives you when we're meeting when we're not that's all on there senior adult Bible study is coming up in a week and a half so beware of that and then lastly again I, we need your email we, I'm excited about this I, I'm bad you can ask my wife I'm bad about secrets but I really want to tell you but a couple of weeks I need your email because we want to give you a gift. I don't want uh, if you don't do that. You can probably still enjoy the gift we're going to give you. It will really, really help if you have an email. We'll give you that. Um, we'll explain that a little more going forward. Uh, just it's, it's a neat thing, but send us your email. Uh, you can either uh, send it to the uh, sidebc.com or you can put it on the uh, paper there and drop it in the offering plate. All right. God bless you guys. I uh, hope you have a great afternoon in the Lord. We will see you this week for uh, Kids Club and Refuge and our midweek services. God bless.